Hello everyone and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we had some good revelations, figured some things out, figured out how the uh, prosecutor's award got broken. I think, I think the game, the mystery here isn't so much who did it, it's how, and I'm still working it out, but I've got, I've got some ideas now. Alright. Order, order, order! Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that, that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer would be the victim, and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Tell me we knew that. Phoenix, you're making us look bad. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. It's true. What's going on here? He was hit over the head with the vase. It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to the conclusions. Wait, I, I remember now. I remember everything. Oh boy. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one that with that picture scribbled on the back. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. Oh, they ripped off the blue badger from her. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked. I rushed towards both of them. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw a shadow. What? This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even, hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Wait, what? Stop, please. Don't pursue this any further. Lana. What is the meaning of this? Please remain seated at the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Gee, Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin his cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Hold it. Which man? When you say that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark. Yes, at least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So then you... ...and rush towards both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. Except it was the other way around. Did Emma kill? Oh, that's why. Okay, okay, I got this. So that's why 
I feel like we had this mostly down, but now that now the pieces are there. So Emma. Emma attacked Marshall and killed him. And then Gant, in exchange for covering it up, or uh, covered it up in exchange for getting a guilty ver verdict on uh, on Dark. Yep, she seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. Then, as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that Dark guy knocked me down, all I could think was, I've got to help that other person. How did you knock him away? What do you mean you think? It it all happened so fast and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. This guy was almost killed before she was witness to a murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl, so then what happened next? There's another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. But the blue badger couldn't exist. Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even drew a picture of him here. But... It was the chief of detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh brother, just when you thought that that thing- <laughs> Just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? I wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see this, his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? Uh, I think I know. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture, yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on the fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright. Wait, what? In this room very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. Oh, what? Uh, the, it was the blue badger. Uh, wait, hold up, hold up. What do we have that looks like the blue badger? Besides the blue badger. Alright, this is probably crazy, but let's take a look at something. Can rotate. Can I? No. See, it doesn't have like the point up top. If it had the point up top, I'd be like, that's it. Although for a shadow, maybe. Hold on. Let's go back and look at the at her picture. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think I think that's a reach.
Uh, it's got, I feel like it has to be it. One, it was hidden away in that safe. How do I make this thing look like the blue badger? Uh, oh, 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 hold up, hold up. Oh, this, this, this is probably one of the few things that would be e slightly easier on the, on the DS. Uh, tilt it forward. Nailed it. I wasn't overthinking it. I was underthinking it. Oh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> they, they get me for that like half second where I'm like, oh, the music didn't stop. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. I'm going to get so many blank stares. But well, that's, uh, what is that exactly? What exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? We've got to show them the correct ang- Oh my god. I, oh, I just had it too. Uh, oh my god, this is going to be a pain. I'm hoping it's not like super picky. I don't know if it needs to be... Eh. Oh my god, you guys, I'm so sorry. Okay. So I think kind of like that. Or do I want it all the way around like... That? Again, I don't know how picky it's going to be. Like that looks pretty good. It's got these. It's got this grid though, and that makes me think I need to be pretty freaking precise. Uh, how about? Well, is this a miracle or what? Okay, cool. Again, I don't know how precise it needed to be, but there it is. No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. But why was the vase like that? No, it can't be. Poor, poor Edgeworth. Order, order. The defense has proven its claim. The serious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... You see, this changes everything. Indeed, very well then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Um, the murder weapon. Right? Because that was the murder weapon. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Upside down. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. And it's not upside down. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? What would that change? I'm... Uh, yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. 
Exactly. What? Phoenix, you gotta give me more than that. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I think I know. I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Okay, so she didn't bash. I thought she bashed him over the head with it. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Uh, ah! The suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. I knew it! I freaking knew it! Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall... Oh, boy. You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? No. Oh. Thud. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edwards, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive proof that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? I evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Uh, yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify, as far as we know. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Oh, uh-oh. Hmm, touche, Miss Guy. I don't know if I like that look or not. Uh. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Uh... Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. Yep. Yep. 
the real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind is in the evidence. I think I know. I think it's this. Record stains must be blood traces from the incident. Yeah, because see, those are clearly marks. If we tip this thing upside down. Hmm. Oh, uh, wait. I think I, I think I see it. Like that. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going for, oh wait, I, I need to. Uh, it is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Ms. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message from the deceased. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. Cause there, there's some, like... Yeah, the lines are on the piece that was found in... Gant's office, and that's like the most... Yep. This is a message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he... Is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. It's like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line here drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. The blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. N no Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. Gotta connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Oh my god. Uh... Oh my god, this is a pain. Wait. I can't. I can't in there. Oh wait. Uh, no, that was it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Again, I'm hoping this isn't too specific. Or that it's like doing the work for me. Can I? Aha! It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people! She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Oh, boy. 
seaworthy. Can't say I didn't warn you. Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. Wow! What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! Gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. To be continued? What? I thought that was it. Uh... Yes, please? Okay, that's where we're gonna call it an episode. Uh... Things are heating up. Things are heating up. This case is really cool, though. Um... Especially for, like, an extra chapter. Yeah, really, really impressed with this so far. Um... We'll just have to see how it ends. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.